What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? We're out here doing some wade fishing for reds today. We've already gotten onto a couple nice fish, but I wanted to take a minute and go over some of my favorite pieces of gear to bring out with me on a wade fishing trip. Really five things I think is gonna make your life a lot easier when you go out wading for fish, be it reds, trout, snook, flounder even, all the inshore species that we're after when you're out wading these flats. These pieces of gear are really gonna help you have an easier time fishing. In fact, might actually help you catch some more fish. And obviously the first thing that's gonna help you be a little bit more organized when you're out wading, keep a little bit more gear on you, maybe even an extra set up is a wade fishing belt. Now the one I've got on right now, I've done a review on. This is the Forever Last G2. As you guys can see, there's a lot of options for putting gear on your belt. You've got a tackle pouch on the back. I can keep a couple lures with me when I'm out. I've got an opportunity to put a drink holder here. I can keep, you know, all the other different pieces of gear on my belt with me while still being able to fish and not lugging around a backpack or anything like that. But probably most importantly, this has some really nice back supports on it. Now as you go out wading and you're out for, you know, a couple hours walking a few miles through pluff mud and sand, it can be a little bit hard on you and the wade belt's gonna help you stay out there a little bit longer. It's gonna be a little bit more comfortable to wade. And again, you've got your gear nice and organized. Now there's a lot of options for wade belts out there. I do prefer this Forever Lash G2, but if you're somebody that likes to bring out a little bit more gear, a little bit more tackle, maybe check out one of these H2O Expresses. You can pick these up at Academy. Two rod holders, two tackle pouches, plier sheath, everything you guys need to go out wading. It's got the back supports on it as well. So pretty nice piece of gear here and even Waiter Dave just goes out with a hip pack, but it's something that allows you to organize your gear and keep everything orderly. Gear management is really important with all the different pieces of gear I'm gonna talk about today that are gonna make your life easier on the flats. And it's really important that you have all that stowed in one good spot and a little bit of back support. So definitely make sure you take that belt out waiting with you when you go out after these fish. Now the second piece of equipment I bring out with me, whether it's a quick afternoon wading trip after work or it's a full day of fishing, is some landing gear. And you've got a couple different options here. The first, probably most most common is a pair of fish grips. These are really easy to use as you're bringing your fish in. You would open up these jaws right here, reach down and lip it, just like that. Really easy to land those fish and control them. Uh, they're gonna shake around, do all crazy stuff as you try to unhook them. That's gonna help you make sure that you have that fish secured for pictures, making sure you get it unhooked properly, all the different stuff that you need to. Now, these are great, but I do prefer, especially for those trout that are really great at throwing the hook right when they get close to you, is a wading net. Now, this one's also made by Forever Last, the same people that make this belt. Uh, this is awesome because I can drop it in the water and the net floats. So when I'm handling a fish, I can drop it in the net and it'll sit there and float. The net doesn't submerge. I don't got to worry about that fish swimming out. So I can drop it right in here, mess around with other stuff on my belt, keep that fish secured in the net and it's totally fine. And it's got that really nice mesh on it. So it's not going to tear the slime off of those trout. Your hooks aren't going to get snagged up as easy. This is probably my favorite wade fishing net out there again, that G2 wading net. So you've got a couple different options as far as landing gear goes, but whenever you go out fishing again, whether it's a quick trip or a full day, make sure you have some landing gear. Now, another important piece of gear to have that's gonna make your life a lot easier is some line cutters and pliers. And yes, those are two different things. I like to have line cutters just because it's a quick retractable tool that I can snip really quickly to change lures fast instead of having to unsheath my pliers and mess around with the line cutters. I really like having these retractable tools. This one's made by Boomerang. Uh, it's nice, sharp blades that don't seem to rust. Every pair of pliers that I've had that I've taken out waiting seem to rust out. In fact, the ones that I have here today, they're great for unhooking fish, but the line cutters have rusted out. So I tend to use my line cutters a little bit more often, but you still should definitely carry some pliers. I know a lot of guys that carry the surgical hemostats. They're just really nice, lightweight. Uh, these are great as well. Make sure you've got some long needle nose pliers in case you do happen to hook a shark. Uh, these are great for getting down and doing a little bit of surgery on fish when they eat that top water too hard or they start to swallow that hook. Make sure you've got some pliers so that you can release those fish safely, or you can make sure that you get your fingers away from those hooks or those sharp fangs as you unhook those fish. Pliers are an absolute necessity when you're out wading on the flats. So I always make sure that I keep some with me. So up next is some really good wading boots. And there's a lot of different options out there. And I do recommend that you choose your boots based on the season you're going to be wading. So it's still pretty nice outside. I'm not having to use the really heavy duty winter boots uh, that have a little bit better insulation. And as you start to go up in price ranges on boots, you get a lot of different things, different tread. The soles are actually going to push out water so you don't have your boot filling up with water, gravel guards, things like that. And I do recommend if you are gonna be wading around in mud that you have one that is a lace up. These zip up ones are great when you're wading sandy flats that have a lot of grass on them. But if you start getting into mud, I really recommend that you have some lace up boots. Otherwise you're gonna be losing your boots in the mud uh, by going down and getting stuck in there. And the lace ups really do a good job of keeping your feet connected to the boot themselves. Um, but when you're out on the flats, I do recommend you use these zippets. They're a little bit more lightweight. They have a little bit less insulation, but they are much more 
more comfortable than these big guys here. Again, when you're in the winter waiting months, you're usually wearing some kind of neoprene sock that does provide some more comfort. So it's not as much of an issue in the later months, uh, but I do recommend for some of the warmer or milder months that we're in right now, you would stick to the zip it boot instead of the lace up boot. I currently use the Backcountry NRS boot. This is a nice zip up boot, got some good tread on it. Very comfortable boot to use. It's actually what I'm wearing right now, uh, but very comfortable to use out on the flats. These are just gonna help make your day a little bit easier. You're not gonna be stepping on gravel, all the rocks that get in your, your regular shoes. Uh, they're not gonna fill up with water. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier for you to walk and a lot easier to fish. Now, last up, we've got the stringer, and this is a really important tool if you plan on keeping fish, because what this is gonna allow you to do, as you guys can see, nice long stringer. You use these clips, or if you're using a traditional stringer where you just run it through the jaw of the fish, this is something you can latch onto your wading belt. Most wading belts do have an insert for this or a clip for it. Hook that fish on to the clip here and you can throw it out behind you, keep fishing and you've got your fish connected on that float and that stringer and you can keep them close to you, but also at a safe distance in case a shark decides it wants to come out and check up your fish that you've caught that day. So really important tool to have if you're gonna be keeping fish uh, or calling them for a tournament. I do like the ones that have these clips on them. These are really nice because you can just hook them onto the jaw. If you've got the traditional stringers that you just run the needle through the jaw of the fish, those fish don't tend to survive as long. It does a little bit more damage to them, but this is about the same gauge as a hook and it keeps those fish nice and connected. Especially if you want to keep some better fish, you can obviously keep these on a stringer and cull and change them out. If you put fish in an ice box, there's no doing that. So that is a slight advantage to waiting. You get to keep the fish that you want to without having to kill the ones you've already caught. So that's pretty much all the gear I've got for you guys today. If you have any questions, leave it down below. If there's anything I left out, please leave it in the comments. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it, and we actually guarantee that you're going to catch more fish while saving time and money. We do this with our premium education, the exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you'll need for inshore fishing. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com, and we hope to see you in the insider family soon.